everyone. This is Matt Show with Intro Stats. Our topic today is correlation and regression. So we're going to be looking at an introduction to correlation and regression. This is the topic about um, dealing with two quantitative data sets that have different units. So com two completely different quantitative data sets and we're trying to figure out if they're related or not. So uh, let's get right into it. So uh, again, the key with correlation and regression is that you're dealing with two different quantitative data sets, usually with different units. And the different units is really what changes the way we analyze. You know, if you're comparing the amount of profits for one company to the profits for another company, you can really do that like with a 2T test. Just compare the profits directly and count how many standard errors apart the, the sample means are. Uh, but when you're dealing with two di completely different quantitative variables, it becomes much more complicated. So, um, so let me let me give you an example here. Suppose we had um, the uh, high temperature uh, for given days in degrees Celsius, and then we have the profits during that day uh, at a store that sells swimsuits. And so the, the thinking of the person running the business is, does temperature play a role in my profits, right? Is it related somehow? Is profit somehow related to uh, um, the temperature on that day? Well, maybe. Let's, let's find out. So what we did was we looked at some data where we, we kept track of the high temperature in degrees Celsius for each day and then what the profits were for that day. Now, these are what we call ordered pair. In other words, these have to come from sort of the, the same person or it could be the same day. Some kind of direct one-to-one -one relationship between these two. So this 17 goes with 378. This, this 19 here uh, goes with 361 and so on. The 20 goes with 399 and so on. Now, uh, one of the keys, again, is I can't compare dollars of profit to degrees Celsius directly. I can't just, like, count how many standard errors apart they are. That doesn't work because they're completely different things. So correlation regression has this sort of um, weird dynamic where we're trying to figure out, well, how do I judge the relationship when I can't sort of just compare the sample means? Well, we actually move into sort of the, the uh, branches of algebra to get, to get an idea. And what we would want to do is we want to assign one of the variables x and one of the variables to be y. So it kind of goes back to your old days of algebra, if you've had an algebra class where you have uh, graphing x and y on the rectangular coordinate system, an x-axis, right? an x-axis and a y-axis. Um, in stats, we have special names for things, of course. Um, the x is often called the explanatory variable when we're dealing with uh, correlation regression, and the y is often called the response variable. Okay? So the explanatory variable is sometimes called the independent variable, um, but think of it as the x. And then the response variable is the dependent variable, the y. Um, but also, it's the one we want to make predictions about. One of the key things with correlation and regression analysis is people use it often to predict what they think the profits of their company are going to do based on the temperature uh, in that or something like that. So the one question would be, well, what's X and what's Y? That's a, actually a really important question in statistics. In algebra classes, oftentimes they just tell you, oh, there's, here's X and here's Y, and uh, here's two points, and you're going to draw the line in between. Uh, that's not how it works in statistics. We're, we're dealing with, it's much more complicated. First of all, that we don't necessarily have a, a de designated, this is always X and this is always Y. A statistician has to think about it. So which variable should be x and which variable should be y? One of the key things to ask yourself is, which variable are you more interested in, right? Which variable are you planning to predict things about, right? So that's kind of one of the things. Um, so would I want, let me ask you kind of a, a question. Would I want to predict 
the temperature on a given day based on my profits, right? Does that sound, does that sound kind of weird? Like if I, had, I knew my profits, could I predict what the temperature is going to be? Is that something I really want to know? That doesn't sound right. But maybe based on the temperature, could I predict what my profits might be? Now that sounds a little more reasonable, to, especially for the people running this store, the, to kind of get an idea of how temperature relates. So in this problem, I think I want to make the temperature x, the explanatory variable, the temperature, and y is going to be my swimsuit profits per day. Okay, because that's the one I really want to make predictions about. Okay, so that's kind of a good way to think about it. Which variable do you really want to make predictions about? Which is the focus? In correlation and regression studies, y is always the real, the focus variable. So it's the thing that a lot of the calculations are based on the y. So you want to make sure that you, whichever variable you're more interested in, especially predicting, you want to make sure that's the y. Now once we do that, then we can create what we call ordered pairs. Kind of goes back to your algebra days, right? We can do an x comma y. So the x number comma y number. So 17 comma 378. That would be what we call the ordered pair. 19 comma 361. The first number is always the x. Second number is always the y. 20 comma 399 and so on, right? We can go down the list. The last one was 22,448, so at this day there was 20, it was 22 degrees Celsius, and their profits for that day were $448, so 22,448. Now, one of the things we always say in stats is, when you get data, graph it, right? It's really good to see a visual representation of what you're dealing with. All right, so here's how, there's the graph of this, I, I graphed it right up here. And if you notice, I made the x-axis degrees Celsius, and I made the y-axis the dollars. And now what we're doing is we're trying to figure out where uh, the, to put the points. So if you guys remember in the rectangular coordinate system, or it's sometimes called Cartesian coordinate system in math, um, you, you look where the x and the y meet. So if you go where x is, for example, this one says 2399. So I'll go where 20 is on the x. 399 is about right at 400, and I'm going to go to where those meet. So if I go where, right up to where those meet, where does the 20 meet? Where does the 20 meet 400 or 399? It looks like it's that point right, right there, right? This point right there would be the point 20, 399. And if you did that for all the points, you get a bunch of points on the scatter plot. Right? So that's, that's what we call, refer to as a scatter plot. A scatter plot. So you put, you put all the ordered pairs on the xy axis on the rectangular coordinate system and you get just a, a bunch of dots all over your graph. Okay? So the one thing about that's different in stats than in algebra class is a lot of times we're talking about two points, right? Usually in the real world we might have hundreds or thousands of, of ordered pairs that we're trying to figure out. So it's a, little, it's a lot more complicated in terms of how the calculation works in statistics. But this is called a scatter plot. Um, so I think I put the definition over here. A scatter plot is a graph of ordered pairs from two quantitative variables on the rectangular coordinate system. Okay, so putting all those ordered pairs. Now what you're looking for is now, is there a line not that goes through the points, because that's not going to happen. What you're looking for, well, it could happen, but it's a, really a rarity. Um, what you're looking for is the, the line that actually gets the closest it possibly can to all the points in the scatter plot. So it's actually a very, very famous line in statistics. This is not like an algebra line. Um, this is sometimes called the regression line, the line of best fit. It's also referred to as the line of least squares because it minimizes error. Um, it's a uh, line of best fit, fits all the data points, and, um, but most people in stats refer to it as the regression line. So the regression line is a much more complicated line that fits all of the data points. So if I had a thousand data points in a scatter plot, this would be the line that gets as close as it possibly can to all thousand data points. So again, it is very, um, 
very interesting. And we'll kind of look at some of the calculation and how that line is actually calculated uh, today. Okay, so whenever you get two different quantitative data sets, we're going to choose one of them to be X, one of them to be Y. We have our ordered pairs, and then we'd make a scatter plot. Again, all of this can be done with the computer. The computer can do all of this. You can actually type in your two data sets or just copy and paste your two data sets in. You click uh, correlation and regression, and usually you got a scatter plot. You can make a scatter plot on the graph menu or in the correlation and regression menu. Um, okay, so here's the line here that the computer drew. All right, this is the line. If you notice, it doesn't necessarily go through the data points. It, it actually just kind of splits them, right? It's trying to get as close as it possibly can. It has to sort of adapt to all of the points. Now, if you look at this line here, how well does this line fit? That's actually the really the big question in correlation and regression studies. How well does the regression line actually fit these data points? Well, they ask you a couple things you want to ask yourself. First of all, what's the direction of the line? Direction of the line. Does the line go up from left to right? If you remember, that incorporates a positive slope. Or does the line go down from left to right? Right? That would be a negative slope. You guys remember from your algebra days? So this line is going up from left to right. We sometimes call that a direct relationship in in math, uh, as x is going up, y is going up. As x goes down, y goes down. So if it goes up from left to right, that's called a positive, positive relationship. Now the closer those dots get to the line, the stronger the relationship. So if the dots are really, really far off from the line, uh, but it's still sort of following the line, sometimes we call that a weak relationship. If the dots are very close to the line, that's called a strong relationship. But you can also have like a moderate relationship. Now, if the dots don't fit the line at all, then you're getting no, no relationship at all. So it doesn't seem like that's the case in this one, though. It seems like the dots actually are pretty close to the line. They seem very close. The line's going up from left to right. So I would classify this one as...